Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today we're taking a look at the latest game from publisher Days of Wonder, and it's a roll and write. This is Corinth. In this game, the players are going to have their own player sheet in front of them. They are going to be drafting dice, and they are going to be using those to collect gold, to deliver goods to different markets, and to move a steward around the city, collecting bonuses for them. Try to get the most points, of course. Most points is going to be the winner at the end of the game. Now, this game is based on a previous design from the same designer called Ispahan. So if you know that game, though it's been out of print for some time, then you're going to be very familiar with this one. It's sort of an adaptation of that game into a roll and write with a couple of changes, of course. If you, you're not familiar with it, that's okay. I'm going to explain how this game goes. And then on the other side, I'll tell you what I think of it. And I'll do a couple of light comparisons to Ispahan, the big brother of this one. All right, so here we go. In the game, each player is going to get one of these sheets of paper from the pad here. You're going to put the central board in play, and you are going to set the dice on the table. You are good to go. You're going to be playing over a certain number of rounds, depending on the number of players. So all of these, with two or three, you start right here with four. So let's say a four-player game, okay? And you are going to be going through a few different phases on your turn. So let me give you the general overview, and then I'll, I'll tear this down a little bit, all right? So... Uh, first thing you do, if it's your turn, you're going to cross off the first one here that has not been crossed off. You're going to grab all of these dice. You may pay gold coins to add these dice to your roll. I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. Let's say I, I don't do that right now. I'm going to roll all of these, and then I'm going to arrange them on this board here. The lowest thing goes down here next to the goats. The highest thing goes up here next to the coins. And then all of the other ones gets sorted from the bottom up. So that three will go there, along with that one, a four there, a five there, that's it. You will notice that with because of this system, that means this spot here will not get filled unless you roll every face from one through six, and this one might not even be filled, and so on, all right? Once that's done, then I pick a group, I remove that group, and I take whatever the bonus is for that group. In this case, I will get three coins, because there are three dice there. The next player will go, they'll take a group. The next player will go and take a group. And the fourth and final player will go and take a group. Then all of the dice go to the next player, who is going to pay if they want to add some yellow ones, roll, arrange them, and start taking sets. Now, points are going to come from a few different areas here. So let's take a look at these districts first. Each one of them has these different little shops with a number of symbols in each of them. And so, when I take a group, let's say we have that there, I will remove that, I will count the number of dice, two dice, and I will mark off two of these spots in one of the shops, okay? So let's say I want to start on uh, this one right here. There are three spots in it. It's going to give me three victory points. I'll mark off one and two, and that's all I do. Later on, I'll get the third one, and then I'll circle the three above it. That's going to get me three victory points. If you are the first person to complete all of them in one district, you're also going to get this. Nobody else gets it if you're the first one. Whereas these, multiple people can get them on their own sheet, okay? Now you also have the coins over here that you'll circle when you have one of those or cross them off as you spend them. And you have the goats right below that. So the coins have a couple of uses. The goats mainly have one use. Let me tell you what that's about, okay? So the yellow dice, let's talk about them. I can, at the beginning of my turn, spend some coins, up to three, to roll these dice. And I would add them to the white ones, I would roll, I would arrange the same way you normally do, and then I would take my turn the same way you normally do. So let me do that. Uh, this is going to go here, three is going to go there, four, five, like so. And let's say I want to take this group here. Put two of them here, I might mark off that one and that one, circle the five, I just got five points, okay? By the way, when you start on one, you need to finish it before you start on another one in the same district. But then after I'm done doing that, since I paid for those yellow dice, these two are going to go away before the next player takes a set. 
Now the coins have another use in the game, which is uh, also the same use that the goats have, and that is you can, after you take your turn, you may build one of these four buildings down here by marking off the spot there and paying the necessary cost. Two goats, two coins and a goat, four coins, four goats, three coins and three goats, all right? And they do uh, the following. This one here means whenever you take coins up at the top, you're going to get two more. So instead of three coins right now, if I had that building, I would get five. This one I'm skipping for one second. This one means whenever you take goods, you're going to get one more. So if I remove this set, I actually make to get to make two markings in that district somewhere. And then this one is going to give me three victory points for every one of these buildings I've unlocked. Up to 12. 3, 6, 9, 12, okay? This one I'm skipping has to do with this area of the board, which is moving the steward around the city, getting different bonuses. Here's how that works, okay? On my turn, the other option I have, instead of taking a set and grabbing some goods or marking some spots, I can remove a set and look at just the pips on one of those dice, doesn't matter how many dice they are, uh, and move the steward that many steps, all right? So for example, he starts in the center here. If I remove the set of twos, I'm gonna move him two spaces. I might go one and then two up here to where there's a green vase. I would circle that and then I would, as a bonus, get to check one of these off anywhere I want to there. And this character, well, then next time they move, they'll start from where they stopped and so on. What this building lets me do is, no matter what set of dice I remove, I may choose to make that number up to two more or two less. So he can move more or move uh, fewer spaces than I was actually taking a die for, okay? Now, this is something you can pay coins for also. So you may, you know, if I took this four and I don't have that building yet, I could choose to pay one more coin and move five steps, for example, or pay one coin and move three steps. But this lets you do it twice up or down for free. That's how that goes. Here's a board from one of my previous plays. Let's take a look at that so you see uh, an example of how this is all going to turn out. Here we have the steward. He moved down one and then I circled that spot. That spot means I get a yellow die for free every time I roll. I could choose to pay two coins and add the other two, but one of them is free all the time. Then he moved twice. One, two, and I circled that. I got two free goats out of that. Then I moved here. One, two, three, and I circled that plus one. And then I moved again up here. This corner, this corner, and this corner are for bonus victory points out here. And the number you write in, i.e. the number of victory points, is equal to how many circles you've um, uh, written in so far. The plus one adds plus one to that score. So I wrote a five there, meaning one, two, three, four, and the plus one was actually five. And then I went directly across, circled this bonus, which gave me another circle. So six was the total. You count all the way back, all right? And so over here, I've got this area. I completed all three. I got 19 points for that. From this area, the steward, I got 11 points from that. In this one, I only made two, the, the little one here. So I got three points for that. I got six there. Uh, goats and coins, for every two left, you're going to get a point. So I got a single point from coins. I got nothing from the goats. This area, I got the six points. Here, I got the nine. And then over here, I unlocked three buildings and the one that gives me bonus points for it. So I got nine out of that. Okay, there you go. That's uh, the game. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so there it is. That is Corinth. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Before I do that, I do want to mention I've played Ispahan. I used to own that game, and, and everything else being equal, both of them being available and all that, I would suggest Corinth over that original design. It's a tighter time frame, it's uh, prettier, and it does a lot of what the original game did without some of the more fiddly rules and in, uh, in just sort of an easier to explain, more captivating package. So there you go. If that's what you all you wanted to know, that's my recommendation. However, let's go ahead and tear into this a little bit. I'm going to start with the things I thought were just okay, that I wasn't particularly impressed with, and then we'll end strong. Overall, I do like this package here. 
So the things that um, I'm not captivated by. The theme. It's nothing too exciting. There's even a couple of carryovers here from Ispahan that I think should have been caught and changed. I'm mainly thinking of the goats. In the original game, it was camels. And it made sense that it was camels because one of the things you could do with that resource was you could send them out on a caravan. So it made sense that they were camels. In this game, they switched that to goats because of the setting, but it doesn't make any sense. They could, it, it should have been stone. You are using that resource to build buildings. That's it. Gold and stone, or gold and then wood, or whatever, a building resource. So it doesn't make any sense that it is goats. The only thing uh, making it that is that it is a, a you know, sort of a one-to-one -one translation of what the original one was. Other than that, you know, the theme is fine, but it's nothing too exciting. And then the other thing is replayability. Uh, the replayability here is fairly low. It's somewhere in the middle. You know, it's, it's the kind of game where there's not enough going on that there are entire sections of the game you are really going to effectively avoid. You're going to do a little bit of everything, you know. Um, so the replayability is going to suffer because of that. I would have loved to have seen at least one extra building. And right now you have four buildings. One of them does nothing except give you points for buildings. Nice, I like that building, but I, I wanted at least one more building that did, did something in-game to give me a little more as far as decisions go. You know, something I cannot get to. Give me the, the, the options there, the choices where I have to make some tough calls. I'm, I'm not going to be able to pursue this strategy, this game, because I'm do going for this other thing. In this game, you'll do most everything. You know, in different degrees, yeah, but it's you're doing it all. So replayability is going to suffer. Everything else I do like in the game, okay? The aesthetics. I think the game is beautiful, it's bright, it's very user-friendly. So thumbs up there. Uh, the game length. Fantastic. It's a, it's a super filler. This game is about 20-25 minutes and they've condensed pretty much, I would say, the, ex the entire experience of Ispahan into a much tighter time frame that still feels good. Still has that central mechanism of that dice tower, you know, arranging the dice. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's um, that's pretty much one-to-one -one from the original game. They've kept that and uh, and wrapped up a couple of new things around it, and that works very well with a tight time frame. The uh, ease of play, very clean design, everything's easy to grasp. The way that the sheet, the player sheet is formatted really helps you to add up your score at the end of the game. I like that very much. And then lastly, tactics and strategy. Um, it's not supreme, but there are some fun choices here, mainly when it comes to moving the steward around. That's really where you're going to get your good stuff. And then the rest of it is a little bit of pushing your luck. This idea of, do I start a really big set in the uh, hard-to-get-to district? If I do that, I'm locking myself into making sure that I can draft those dice when they come up. Because if I start it and don't finish it, I have certainly wasted my actions, right? So that's mainly it. That's where, that's where the, uh, the tactics come in. That responding to what's going on and what you want to invest in. So I enjoy it. Overall, I have to say I was very happy to see that the game Ispahan was coming back into print but not a direct reprint, right? This reworking of it, this idea where we're going to take the game, turn it into a roll and write, which to be honest, this behind kind of felt like a roll and write before that was a thing, and stripping away some of those things that they could do away with, you know? So one thing they got rid of was that idea of the, the camels. Like I said, that's gone. Now um, that's sort of been taken over by the steward moving around, which I like much better. And then they also did away with a deck of cards that would give you bonuses, which is fine. Again, they, they kind of wrapped those two things up into the steward moving around. Um, I like the flexibility there. I like the manipulation of that. That all works for me. So, yeah, overall, I like this one. This is nice, small package, tight time frame, attractive, fun to play. That's the thing at the end of the day. So this is going to get a seal of approval from me. 
I certainly recommend you give it a look if you enjoy roll and writes, if you enjoy interesting dice mechanisms, all of that stuff. So again, seal of approval for Corinth. I am Z Garcia. I'm going to see you all on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.